I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage in Southern California. This is a 71 Corniche. It has the brake fluid hydraulic system that runs off of the 363 fluid. The Shadows 2 is essentially the same, yes. Has the same kind of setup. This is a left-hand drive car, so this rat trap is on the left side of the car. Right-hand drive, it would be up in here, okay? Because the pedals are on the right side. As you, if you come over here, you can see there's holes in the box, right there, designed for the pedals to come through, okay? So this rat trap, here's your, here's the brains of the braking and, and, uh, and, and this is actually the brains of the braking system, other than just building pressure. The accumulators build the pressure. They're called accumulators because they accumulate pressure and have it ready to use when you need it, okay? So what happens next is when you apply the brake pedal, which I'm doing here manually, you can see there's, this is where the brake pedal goes up into the car. It goes through linkages and you start seeing things move. Okay, this is an early car up to 1970 through 1974. They had this little tiny master cylinder here. Uh, and what that does is it supplies resistance against this thing. If you watch it right here, this arm's gonna move. As I pull this pedal, you'll see this linkage right here is connected to it. See right there? So it starts to push this thing that way. And what that does is it goes against this little master cylinder, which goes to the lower pistons on the rear calipers, okay? The rear caliper, if you look at this, here's one. Okay, it has four pistons. So on this year model, I don't know if this is the same one, it just goes to these two lower pistons. So when you actually, the car is not running and you apply that master cylinder, it's pushing the brake pads on the bottom only. It's just pushing the brake pads on the bottom. Okay, so that's where this master cylinder goes. And it's designed to, I guess, if you want to come back around here again, Steve, you can see better. Okay, so what that does is supply resistance so that it can activate these. These are called your distribution valves. And if you watch it, you'll see the linkages. It'll go there. And as soon as it gets resist, I can hold it right here. And you can see these other linkages moving in there, right? See that? Those are your distribution valves. And their job is to distribute high pressure brake fluid to the brakes, to the calipers. Now on the Shadow 2, actually from 75 on, they got rid of this master cylinder. And instead of having that do the supply the resistance, they put in a rubber stop rubber block. So, so that's why the brake pedal feels really weird on the, the later ones, it's kind of bouncy. These distribution valves, as you can see, there are a lot of hydraulic lines coming. They all come down parallel, boom, boom, boom. They come from the accumulators. Uh, I think the center one on both valves, there's a number one and a number two. The center line is the high pressure inlet. And I forget which one, there's two on either side of that center line and one just goes back to the reservoir. So that when you take off the brakes, it lets it bleed back. And then the other one goes to junction blocks. This is pretty complex. And you see, this still has some of the rubber identification pads on here. Uh, it, and it dis distributes between the wheels. Now, now we can go over here for a second. So on the front, we only have half the brakes here. We've got two calipers on one wheel and one caliper on the rear wheel on the front wheel. So the front caliper and the upper piston on the rear caliper is run by the number one system. So that's that upper valve. Okay, and that, when you hit the brakes and it hits that master cylinder and then the levers move that valve, that applies high pressure fluid to those. The rear calipers, on the front wheel are run on the number two system. So that gives you a dual system. They do that for safety reasons. Uh, 
Here are the distribution valves, and they're pretty, pretty interesting, really. There is no seal on this. This is a machine fit, a little piston that goes in there, and they are designed to seat. That is why we get that buildup in that rat trap. Uh, mineral oil cars have the same things. Same basic stuff here uh, as far as the brakes are concerned. So they, they leak. Uh, the only thing you can do to, to reduce the leak on the ground, because once that tray fills up, or if you put it on a tow truck, it's going to run out. And people get, don't like that. There's nothing you can do about it. What I normally do is I will take that off about the same time I do a reservoir, clean it out, and I'll put an absorbent in there. And usually I use like thick felt or something like that. And that helps soak it up as, and delay that drippage uh, over time. The next part of the system, and we can look over here real quick and I'll show you where it's mounted. Um, if you see right above the master cylinder, you're gonna have to come around more, Steve. There you go. You will see right here, this is called a G valve. That is, uh, it's a pressure conscious valve and its job is to prevent the rear wheels from locking up in a panic stop. And this G valve here, here's one right here off the car, is essentially, you've got your high pressure going to the rear uh, rear upper rear calipers comes in here, right? And it comes out here. And under normal circumstances, it's fun, nothing happens. But under a panic stop, and in a panic stop, the car will surge, right? You'll, the nose dive. And then inside here is a big ball bearing that will roll up with that G force. That's why they call it a G valve. That G-force will roll that valve up and restrict the rear brakes. Real simple. It's, it's like early, early, early anti-lock brake system. Here's a, here's a new master cylinder right here. See, this is just a basically a very simple little cylinder that takes fluid in right here. And as this, this piston pushes, it puts it out here. This is a, this. <laughs> I typically use a Jaguar E-type clutch master cylinder. That's what this is for, for replacement. So there's your braking system, the high pressure braking system. So you, if you remember the 2200 PSI that you build up to here, every time you tap the brakes, it drops it off a little bit until it reaches I think 1800, then it starts building again. So these things are constantly working as you are constantly working the brakes. Now, since the only true static braking you have on this car, static, I mean, not high pressure, without the engine running on these early cars is this tiny little master cylinder pushing these two pistons on each caliper in the rear. It's essentially no brakes. This gives you your pedal height. So how high the pedal is, uh, and it is designed for like an inch to maybe an inch and a half a drop. Uh, these are very, very difficult to bleed out. Very difficult. To, a lot of times it's real hard to get that big, solid high pedal when you're bleeding these out. So just imagine this, you're driving along, you have these accumulators, which have a gas pressure, right? And these are maintenance items. You have no gas in here. So the system will still build to the 2200 PSI. So long as this is all working and the pumps are working, it'll still build to that 2200 PSI. But as soon as you tap the brakes, it goes to zero because you don't have this accumulated pressure in here. That's why they're called accumulators. It's, it's just, you have it for a second, and let's say your car stalls, and you're on the freeway, and you go to hit the brakes, and you feel nothing. It's not a good feeling. And this has happened to 
people. Wow, a lot of people. Um, so these these accumulators are very. It's very important to make sure you have proper pressures. Now